Hello, Internet, and welcome back to Antiheroes Anonymous, or welcome for the first time if it's your first time joining us. Huh? I just thought the episode title was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't like I said, it's going to be a tonal shift, probably. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. I'm Ethan, and I'm the Dungeon Master for this fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons show. Uh, we play, uh, sorry, my players will now introduce themselves. Yes. Uh, would yeah. you mind starting this off? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Nick. I play uh, Thaddeus, the Human Vengeance Paladin. I'm Kay. I play Harmony, who is the Tiefling Wild Magic Sorcerer. And I'm Melissa, and I play Mara, who is a Human Rogue Pirate. I'm Zach, and I play Hunter, who is a Warforged Fighter Ranger. Uh, so we stream uh, on Twitch every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific Time, and then post our episodes to YouTube the following Wednesday. Uh, throughout the show, we use a variety of custom items as well as a custom wild magic table. So if you're watching along, you can be aware of that. Um, our music comes from Battle Bards, Tabletop Audio, and Incompetech. And our character portraits, which you can see up in the top right corner on the character cards, come from an artist uh, whose name is Carrie Peach, who is by at Carrie Draws on Twitter. Uh, if you're watching us on Twitch, you can check the channel page for links and info about everything I just mentioned and more. And if you're watching us on YouTube, you can check the video description for a similar amount of information. Uh, then, if you still want more, you can follow us on Twitter, at AntiHeroesAnon, to get information about what we're doing, when we're doing it, uh, and also fun little tweets about each episode's uh, goings-on. Other than that, we hope you enjoy the show, uh, come back frequently, and share with your friends. So, a quick recap, um, which I don't have actually in front of me, so we're going to wing it. Uh, the party traveled to the town of Ravenmore in order to help uh, their friend Mandis, a, uh, apparently a silver dragon who had been captured by a yeah. shadow vampire named Alkeen. Um, and through many trials and tribulations, they managed to fight their way through to <clears throat> Alkeen's castle in the Shadowfell, uh, free Mandis from the plane of negative energy where he was trapped, and defeat the vampire atop his uh, tower with a Blast of Light from Harmony. Um, then, uh, spending an episode sort of exploring the castle, uh, they managed to pour holy water on the, the coffin of Alkeen, ensuring that his curse will never again return to that area, um, and also uh, strike a deal with... Harmony managed to strike a deal with a fiendish entity uh, who promised her help with any sort of... Um, uh, Loopholes in the law that she might need in fiendish law that she might contractual need contractual assistance. Yes, um, <clears throat> in exchange for his freedom from the prison there, and so then the party traveled back to Ravenmore, where they spent a night in the sewers after partying with Mandis and his orphans, um, who were heading north towards Adeus, and then uh, Mandis was going to once he'd secured the orphan safety, uh, go to help the party's friend Dawn, who is in a bit of a plight at the moment. Um, but leaving the group of you with uh, your friend Eli in the sewers to have a nice long rest um, before setting off in the morning uh, to journey to the east to the Elderhaven Reaches and your ultimate goal. So that's where we left off. Um, the scene fades in with the group of you uh, waking up, probably that is first and foremost to do his morning prayers. Uh, in the midst of the dark, dank, and disgusting smelling sewers, um, but nonetheless well rested uh, and ready to set off on the next leg of your adventure. So, it's up to you now. Guys, I think I might be able to teleport twice today. Oh, great. I feel like energized. You may have a certain glow about you. Almost have a little energy today. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, we're not planning on encountering any world shattering threats today, so I say go for it. Well, yeah. you never really plan on encountering such threats. Nonsense, I haven't done that, and there's no world shattering threats on it right now. <laughs> Your shadow looks nice and muscular today. Thanks! <laughs> Eli kind of shoulders over a little bit at the mention of the agenda and says, I mean, just out of curiosity, I know that you're going to drop me off in Redwater, but what is left on the agenda? And his eyes are kind of like sparkling, <laughs> ready to hear what's next for you guys. Oh dear. Well, the next step of the plan. Where we go? Get book. Get. Go to Redwater, right? Yes. Yep. Get Comico. Yep. Return to the Drowning Kiss. Yeah. 
set sail for there for <clears throat> the other Haven regions. We have the compass, right? Yes. You didn't lose it in the shadow fell. Hello, pirate. The camera pants exactly. to the boat just, just across her back. Just like your <laughs> rat. Hello. Pinky. <laughs> My rat. My <laughs> rat. There's a few steps in the middle of there that I'm not quite sure what they'll be, but we'll see when we get there. And then at the very end is Kill Lord. Again. 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 For good. He nods. All right, well, I mean, um, I really do, if I'm honest, wish that I could come with you some more. Um, it's been terrifying, but uh, at the same time, I feel like I've grown a lot. Um, and I always do whenever I spend time with you guys. So. If I didn't have things to accomplish in my back in my town, people who are in need of my help. Well, maybe we can adventure again together some other day. I look forward to it. I just say I don't think we could have done this without you either. He blushes a little bit, which is kind of purplish against his blue skin. <laughs> anyway, like, are we ready to go? I'm ready. I've said my prayers. Yeah, I don't think we have any more business to here. So, Moonlight Sparkle isn't here now. And Yako counts as a passenger, but... Pinky does not. Pinky doesn't. So it's... Six people? Alright, we're good. It's all good! Where should I... I think the town square will be or where the I... Temple. Oh, the temple? I was gonna say the temple. Temple. Uh, Eli's teleported with you before, so he's familiar with how it works. And he, when you're just trying to figure out, um, I'm like, should what I just do right in the middle of the town square and scare everybody? Because that's kind of funny. Uh, he, I he, feel like they've been scared. Of this time. He takes his holy symbol <laughs> off of his neck, uh, his holy symbol of Melora, and sort of hands it to you and says, "An associated object helps with accuracy, right?" Yes. I mean, this is from the temple. My All word. right, temple it is. Jeez. This is from the town square brick. <laughs> I don't have anything from anywhere else in the town. Really, I mean, technically, but... you're from the town, but does that work? I don't know if it works that way. You tell me. <laughs> Hold them and find out. You know quite a bit more about magic than I do, so. Do a princess oh, carry. Geez. A princess carry. <laughs> All right. Well, if we're ready, then I will use my seventh level spell and cast teleport, and I will aim for the. Okay. There's a now familiar rush of color and a pulling sensation as a lot of you are pulled from your current location and instantaneously dropped uh, unceremoniously into the riverbed temple in Redwater where you find yourselves sort of uh, picking yourselves off the ground uh, from the, um, the two or three inches of water that covers the, the ground of the temple that sits exactly on the riverbed. Um, looking around, you, when all of the colors uh, dissipate and the disorientation sort of fades a little bit, you see um, a couple startled priests who then uh, <laughs> recognize Eli, and you can see like a look of relief in their eyes as they then return to setting about their, uh, their work. Um, I'm satisfied. I give Eli his... his Puts it back on his neck. So, uh, what? Are you gonna stick around town for a little bit, or are you heading off right away? Well, you need to go find your girl. Yeah, I'll go look for her. Um, I don't know. Do we want to do some shopping? Replenish some supplies? I could use a few more potions. Hmm, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Because um, I can only make a certain number every night. I'll go see if I can find any diamonds that would help us make conflict to come. Diamonds? Mm hmm. Okay. Sure. What else, what other uh, well, if you guys want to branch off and do separate things, um, I don't like, think I'm actually going to have to. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm buying diamonds yeah. for later. The one thing I'll say about that is the diamonds that you find in this area that you can purchase are um, uh, they are labeled as White Crest diamonds, which is a name uh, you're familiar with. Yes. Uh -huh. I am not going to say anything about the proprietor, <laughs> but I like do kind of probably like cringe a little bit when I learn, when I or at least like when I see what they're what they are. Yeah, and it, it strikes you that uh, geographically the white crest um, baronry and uh, 
diamond mines are in the mountains only a little ways north of here, actually. That's the extent. <laughs> uh, Harmony, you're not. Uh, you're, you're able to find a uh, like a small apothecary in town. If not potions, materials to make potions. Yeah, they definitely have materials to make potions. They probably have. Uh, you're looking just for basic healing potions. Or greater, or fire breathing. Anything that I can. They have surprisingly one standard healing potion in stock and two greater healing potions in stock. Cool, I'll take all of them. How much are they? Uh, standard ones are fifty. Okay. Greater one are... Or... Are you with me? No, I'm just trying How much to do I charge you when you when you make the greater healing portion? Uh, I don't remember. hundred? So okay, 50, so then 100? then uh, greater healing potion is two hundred gold. So two fifty total? Mm-hmm. Uh, four fifty if you want all of them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Hunter. Does Mara want to do anything? Um, I think I'm gonna go into the tavern and try to set some of the fake gems. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> let's see, let's see here. No, I have Natural one on the roll to appraise those gems. So yeah, when you pull out the bag of gems, uh, the proprietor of the tavern, uh, do you want to go back to the one you know, which is, yeah. um, okay. The one where, I'm trying to remember her name. Oh yeah, I remember. I think it's Hilda and, and Rick. Rick. Oh, those two? You're going to sell to them? Oh, come on. No, no uh, they're happy to see you to begin with, and then you pull out the, the sack of gems you're willing to pay lavishly with, and Hilda's eyes go wide, and she calls into the back, Rick! We got a big spender! Get out the fine stuff! And you hear like a clatter come from uh, behind the counter, and see Rick begins to prepare. No. Um, Wait. Some fancy, fancy alcohol okay. for you. <laughs> okay, so after their eyes are really, really bugged out, I'll uh, surreptitiously leave, but I'll pay a regular money. Okay. Um, well, depending on how much you want to drink, uh, the amount would change, but it's not really enough to take away from your funds at this point, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Did they, did they have a, um, a specialty? Like type food that they prepared that every, the game liked. I have, uh, a, I have this recollection. Yeah, they, that Rick had Rick some soup good, that everyone yeah. was a fan of. Okay, yeah. so I get some of that to go for everybody. All right, little doggy bags. Uh, yeah, they, they fill up like barrels of stew. <laughs> what could you transport stew in? I don't know. <laughs> Wine skins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wineskins, casks. Yeah, uh, some casks of stew, um, <laughs> like. Uh, Hilda gives you a weird look when you order stew to go, but, like um, she shouts back at Rick, and, uh, after some, some clattering about back there, he manages to come out with a couple of casks Maybe of stew for jars. you. Jars? <laughs> we'll say, we'll say casks. They've got casks on hand. Alright, so. I also All right, well, here's your stew to go. Thanks! <laughs> I leave some more of the fake gems. <laughs> And it, well, she, her eyes are just wide, and she's like, Thank you so much for your patronage. We always appreciate it when you and your friends come through here. Yeah, you're the worst. It's an absolute <laughs> pleasure and a treat. It's just a joke. Come on, um, like that, buddy. <laughs> and as the, as the door closes behind you and the bell is ringing, like, at the top of the door, you can just hear, like, her shouting back into the kitchen, like, Rick, we're going shopping tonight! <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and you can hear Rick's groan as you leave. I know you. I know you paid, but they think that they've been generously tipped. I know. Generous. <laughs> <laughs> I would also like to shop for some ballet slippers. Okay. <laughs> if I can find just a nice, cute pair of ballet slippers. Yeah, I don't think that'd be terribly hard. Um, it's not necessarily like a common item, though, so I'd say it's. Actually, Maybe probably not. like two gold or something like that. Okay, yes, yeah, I'll use my personal funds for that. Mm -hmm. And then I, I want. <coughs> I want. Um. Maybe. Uh, like a scarf, or something like a really long scarf. 
Okay. Yeah, easy enough. Like five silver. Okay. No, no, no. We're really, really nice. Still have fun. Still have fun. <laughs> Breaking the bank here, guys. Okay. So oh, is the like the sky cleared and Ignatius is. Big yeah, wild um, stuff. the sky here seems really clear. And actually, as you're walking around the town looking for Kamiko, you notice that like um, some of the Fey presence here that was like making the air all mystical and shimmery and weird that you remember from last time mm -hmm. has diminished. Uh, and as you're walking around, you see less and less of those uh, little pixie homes. They seem to have packed up their little homes yeah. uh, and headed back into the forest recently. Um, Uh, yeah, and then eventually, after a bit of wandering, um, you never see Ignatius, but you day. do, uh, and if you ask around about him, you find out that uh, he got word from a friend yeah. uh, that he there was some, some issue he needed to respond to, uh, and he was a, he left headed towards a dais, basically. Okay. But uh, only a few hours, like maybe 12 hours ago. Okay. Perhaps. Uh, and then you find uh, Kameko. Before, while we're wandering, I wanted to have a conversation with Yaka. Okay. So I wanted to cast Speak with Animals and talk with him. Yep. And um, do you just kind of like sit him down in an elevator? No, we're, we're like walking. I think it's like while we're walking and sort of looking for Kameko, I'm going to talk to Yaka and say, we're finally going home. Yes, indeed. There's been some time. It feels since I came to join you at the behest of my master. Yeah, what do you think we'll find? Mm, it's hard to say. I had not roamed the physical lands of the Elder Haven reaches in hundreds of years, even before I left, so. Hmm. Do you know anything about the other guardians? He shakes his head and says, I cannot say. Um, but if their situation is. Well, I, I just, I fear that the situation is dire for all the citizens of the realm, including the spirits. Yeah, me too. And I think that you will see as we get closer what I mean. Mm -hmm. And then I'll also tell them, everyone's very proud of you. You did a great job back there and all like that in. Puffs out his chest and yeah, rises to the scratches. Set his head and say you did great. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it is the duty of an, uh, a proud child of Gakko. To and, serve uh, where necessary. Then I'll ask him, um, what do you think of Kameko, the girl that we're looking for? Uh, Did you sense anything from her when we were in our brief travels together? says she has an ancient scent. Um, yeah. There is something to her lineage. I can smell it in, in her, her, her blood. She think, is a, a person of note. Do you think we should talk to her about it before we go there? About what? About where she's actually from. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't know that I sensed any deception from her on her I part, either. but perhaps it okay. could be worth it. Okay. And then, uh, unless you had anything to talk about. We can find Kamiko. Nope. Uh, he, he remarks that uh, he's happy to be able to converse with you at last. Um, I'm sorry it took so long for me to learn this. It's been frustrating being able to understand you and not be understood. Well, and then I'll maybe like, if he wants to talk, and I'll say, well, next time if you want to talk to me, because it's only lasts for so long, I'll tell him to like, just like paw my leg. Understood. And, uh, and then I'll, and I'll cast, and I'll, we can talk if I can find a spell available. Yeah. So. Um, other than that, he just sort of, as you're walking, like tries to keep his head by your hand for those scratches. Oh yeah, and no. you realize very quickly that he loves scratches. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, so. and I'll find the spots he likes and scratch him. Yeah, and he lets out big tiger purrs. <laughs> <laughs> um, Appropriately. You find Kameko mm -hmm. uh, with a group of Redwater guards, sort of without words, somehow simultaneously, like managing to instruct them 
in combat. Like she's running them through drills, and so like uh, they will be charging at her and like attacking with sword strikes, and she'll deftly parry with her bare hands, knock the sword out, and then like uh, like twist their arm around and like force them to their knees. And like she'll then she'll do it in slow motion again to show them how to do it. Yeah. And they're just practicing different combat techniques. Uh, and as she sees you approach, um, you're struck again by the resemblance to Mara. It's like not as, even necessarily physically. Um, there's just something that seems to connect her in the back of your brain. Okay. Um, and she sees you coming, and her eyes brighten, and uh, she she gives you a wave from afar. Yeah. Her. And then I bow. The greeting. She echoes it. Yeah. And then I'll walk up to her and then in uh <laughs> I guess in Keen I'll say, We're back. <laughs> I see that. Um I take it this means that your mission was successful? Yeah. And I'll like point at the skies. And yes. Say, it lightened up, uh just yesterday. Yes. We uh got out practically unscathed. Everything should be returned to normal soon. <laughs> Does this mean that it's finally it's time to return to the east, to home? Yeah, and I'll look at her and be like, oh, and be like it's time to go home. And like a, a, an expression of grim determination crosses her face and she, she nods and says, I did what I could while I was here to fend off the snake people Yeah. and um, train up these guards so that they will not be so vulnerable next time. They have many openings in their defenses. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad that you and they are okay. I hope to leave them in better state than, than I came. It looked like they're learning very well, very quickly from you. Yeah, and uh, as you sort of glance back at the group of them, you can see that they're all pretty bruised. Um, <laughs> in like places that you would expect someone who is trained in yeah. martial arts to like go for, like um, if they were trying to like spar with something. So yeah, uh, she's clearly done a number on these cards, <laughs> but uh, they also do look. Um, more confident than before. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so she uh, seems very eager to get going and just sort of uh, tags along, mm -hmm. uh, gives Yako a couple scratches on the head. As yeah, well. and then I'll ask her, um, we're not gonna be, I don't think we're gonna go into any other towns before we get there. Do you need anything to stock up before we go? Uh, she reaches down to her belt and uh, pulls out a set of daggers and says, no, I've restocked. The guards okay. here were very kind. Okay. And she <laughs> spins them and puts them back. It's bound to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the resemblance to Mara. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Most Monks have an, an ability that lets them, like, they don't need to eat? Is that a thing? It's like called like, uh, so like they don't like need to body, not body. It's something. No, you're right. right. They don't need to eat. Yeah. yeah. So she says, uh, she says to you, I can travel light because I'm able to sustain my body on the spiritual energies of the world alone. Photosynthesis. <laughs> I don't think it's that. <laughs> but she like sure. tilts her head to the side and says, hey, what? I, I, I do not know what this photosynthesis is, but don't worry about it. Perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no key word for photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, okay. I know, but. Yeah, so the group of you reconverge at the Riverbed Temple, uh, where Eli has assembled um, basically as many food supplies as he can for your journey. Okay. Um, uh, and. Uh, He's sort of waiting there in the center of the temple before the statue of Melora, uh, with a little bit of nervous w nervousness, waiting for the group of you to arrive. And then, uh, once everyone is there, uh, he pushes the supplies towards you. Uh, and we'll say it's probably about 20 days of rations. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. And he says, I'm sorry, this is really all I could scrounge up. Things are, have been a bit tight since the outlying farms had to come into the city for refuge, but oh, Thank you. the people of the city, just from the little talking I've done to them, are very grateful to you for what you've done. Um, they were all eager to help. So it's as much as a, a gift from the city of Redwater as it is from you. Well, tell them thank you, considering how much 
<laughs> yeah, he's a fatty, right? Yeah. Fatty, fatty. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess if our business here is concluded. Hi, Hanako. <laughs> she waves a little bit, like. She's still like not very good at the language, but she's picked up on that a waves like hello. She can so, hear her name. Yeah. <laughs> and she waves back and then sort of like looks nervously at Hunter. Um, when you start to talk about departing, uh, Eli uh, sort of tries to. You see him trying to catch your glance, Harmony, just a little bit, uh, and he just kind of like tilts his head to the, to the side a little bit, like motioning. The direction of where you know that his chamber is. You need this culture of love. <laughs> I don't need a potion. I don't need a potion. I, well, I have a potion. It's a potion of water. I don't think it's going to come in <laughs> Might if I push you off the boat. All right. Well, I'm going to slip away when everybody's trying to get the stuff all together. Nonchalantly. Everyone's like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> my my past perception is really good. You can't sneak away from me then. I could turn myself into Zilda even now. Yeah. I'm not I mean, do you want to try and sneak away? I'm right. slipped. I'm trying to like not draw attention to myself. All right. Roll a stealth check. Walk away. Quite you guys gonna try to. Mm, okay. Oh dear. Natural one. That big shadow. Natural one. I've rolled twice so far this session. Both oh, natural dear. ones. Come on, Vax. Uh, um, oh, I noticed them. <laughs> <laughs> I think the majority of people noticed uh, Harmony sneaking away. And then uh, Eli, like, trips over something. Yeah, yeah no, Eli, 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 like, that bad. <laughs> Eli trips over uh, the end of his robe and actually ends up face planting in the, <laughs> in the water with a big splash. <laughs> before picking himself up. And uh, sort of uh, purple facedly uh, heading <laughs> yeah. off to his room uh, with Harmony in tow. I'm like prestidigitationing his room to dry him off <laughs> as we go up the stairs. And so by the time you, by the time you get to his room, uh, he's all dried off, and uh, he closes the door behind the two of you, and then turns around to face you, uh, and you can see as soon as he turns around that like he hadn't thought this far ahead, <laughs> <laughs> like. His eyes go a little bit wide, uh, and it, you can tell that his mind is blank for just a brief second. Um, yeah, this is awkward. Right, yeah. Look, I wasn't trying to make it awkward by pulling you off to the side, I just... Yeah, well, but then you tripped and fell in the fountain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he's sort of like... Are you okay, by the way? Yeah, I'm fine. Like, he holds up his arms and is like, look, no cuts and bruises. Just your ego. Just my ego. <laughs> um, I just, I felt like we needed to talk one more time before you leave. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and I guess I don't really know where to start, but watching you and the way that you use your magic has been inspirational for me and I don't have any family anymore. Um, he kind of chuckles a morose chuckle and says uh, Thaddeus is responsible for two of their deaths <laughs> but uh, it's complicated but you, you get the point is that you're, you and your group are about as close as I have to family at this point. And, um, you mean a lot to me. And, uh, he sort of thinks about what he said for a second and says, you in particular mean a lot to me. And then he's blushing again. <laughs> um, thank you. I, uh, it's weird because, like, I don't know if I have family anymore either. I've been away from my tribe for so long, and now my mom's an outcast, and who knows if she even wants to see me again. And I'm sure she does. The point is, this group is kind of like my family, too, and 
well, there's a reason that I wanted you to come with us. And it wasn't just because you're good at all that holy magic stuff. That, that's all. Um, I'm not going to die or anything. And when this is all over, I, I can come back. <laughs> so, like, I just, it's not going to be a goodbye, okay? And when you say I'm not going to die or anything, you see his eyes go wide. And he's like, I hadn't even thought of it. <laughs> You better, you better not die. I, I'm not, I mean, I'm going to try not to. I don't think Thaddeus would let you die. If he does, I'll kill him. <laughs> if he does, I'll kill him. And you can see that he like, it like, he clamps his hand over his mouth like that. Don't tell him I said that, please. Yeah, for you. I know you two don't always get along. I don't make any promises. I look up to him too, quite a bit. I know. I don't understand it, but I know. <laughs> He's very wise in his own way. Um, and there's there's that awkward moment of silence. And he just says, "Yeah, just don't die." <laughs> I, I'll I'll send messages to you when I can. I'd like we'll, that. We'll be able to talk, um, and and I'll practice my magic. So maybe maybe I'll learn to send messages too. Who knows? You still have that necklace they gave you, right? He like reaches into his, his robes and pulls it out. Maybe you can try. I forget what was. This it was necklace? just it was just the pretty necklace I think that I got from the very first dungeon. Okay, right, right. Um. Yeah. Maybe if you're... I keep it with me always. If you're interested in meddling with some magic, you can try enchanting it like I do. Well, you watched me do some stuff. Never tried, but it's worth a shot, I guess. Anyway, um... Bye, I guess. <laughs> you just kind of, like, moved to walk out of the room? I just, well, I'm not moving yet. I'm just standing there. <laughs> Yeah, and he, he's kind of like got his hands sort of like at his sides awkwardly. He's like, yeah, yeah, I guess I guess this is goodbye. I'll give him a hug. Yeah, yeah he hugs back. Um, and then sort of as the hug is breaking apart and like you're both sort of making that motion to leave, um, if you allow him, he pulls you back in close again and gives you just a kiss on the cheek and says, really don't die. You really don't die. I won't. And then uh, and I'll leave without looking at him. Yeah, yeah. He he kind of looks away after that too. And like uh, when he comes back out, like he's as purple as Harmony's hair. <laughs> You're like red skin instead of pink skin. <laughs> he could be like a very like bright magenta color. So like right when they leave, and then like turn to that, like now oh, the rip has gone. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I'm like, um, so I know that we talked briefly about the agenda. What are we doing with Dawn? Dawn has friends. Dawn can look after herself. Okay. Um, I trust in bringing Ignatius and Magnus to get her out of her situation. Um, okay. I'm not going to risk the fate of the world on us, you know, getting involved in that stuff. Okay. I have confidence in Dawn. Okay. As long as you're okay with him. I think, I think most of us would agree. Even though we want to see her safe. Yeah. You think Harmony really felt that she was going to get away clean when we can't leave without her? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know her. That is smile and nods, yeah. yeah. So. When I come back down the stairs, I'm making a big show of, like, not being embarrassed, and so I'm like, All right, everybody, I hope you're ready, because we're leaving! But Eli's, like, two steps behind her, <laughs> and purple. <Yeah. laughs> and then I'll, like, look at them. Wow, like, that must have been a really... You guys said you're I don't want to hear it! Let's go! Wow. Did we bring something from the ship? Um... I feel like we did. I feel like we brought I, Yeah, I think about. you did think of it. I don't remember what it was you grabbed. a plank. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that was some items, but what did we grab? 
I have certainly grabbed something. Yeah, I, I, I remember I, this conversation. I recall you grabbing something. I just don't remember what it was. Yeah. So. Well, didn't Pinky come from like the ship in the first place? Mm. Pinky came from the jungles on the continent. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He's a gentle rat. Well, that's what I'm not. Yeah, he I'm appeared. Kind of, although he, I do have stuff that I stole from Kamehameha. He, he appeared. <laughs> Pinky <laughs> appeared shortly after um, the interplanar risk analysis bureau oh, agent so came to visit. Mm -hmm. Was so it like uh, like a sailcloth or a lion? I'm trying to remember. I don't remember what it was, but you've got something. But we have something. Okay. Memories. We have memories from it. <laughs> I don't remember. Okay, then I'm basically just like, do you do this feature? Here you go. You've got everything packed up. Okay, we're going. And I cast the first station <laughs> without giving anyone a chance to really be like, to say anything. Yeah, that is like scurries over within range of spell. Yeah. Like, no, well, I would make sure you guys are all within range, obviously. Um, and there's, I feel like I, I would, assumed you guys I feel like I would tell, right I'd try and like translate the comic code, we're going, but I like wouldn't finish this. <laughs> <laughs> the comic code, we're going! going. <laughs> um, you get like her name out before the, there's the flash of rainbow. Like, this terror. I missed. Uh, Look of terror as we know. The sensation as you're pulled upward and then immediately slammed back down uh, onto the hard deck <laughs> of the drowning kiss. Um, in a disorienting wave of dizziness and color. Um, and as you look around yourselves, oh no. oh. uh, you find yourselves in an environment that you didn't necessarily expect. Uh, the Drowning Kiss is no longer anchored where you left it. Uh, and in fact, it's the most disorienting part is that you look out off the deck of the, the off the like uh, edges of the ship and all you can see is sky and water. Like you, the drowning kiss is up higher than it should be, and you sort of go to the edges of the ship, uh, and you look around and sort of take your bearing, and somehow the drowning kiss has become perched atop the volcano in the center of Kamekame Island, um, which is the, the most bewildering moment. Uh, but then you start to look around and you get a better idea of how this might have happened. Uh, and you notice that Kamekame Island itself has changed drastically in the week or so that it's been since you were here. Um, just looking down on the island from your perched vantage point up here, sort of almost teetering on the edge, the lip of the volcano, uh, you see that um, lots of areas that were just trees um, before uh, have basically been covered entirely with a uh, thick greenish substance of some sort. Um, and in fact, there is a uh, tract of this substance that leads from the beach, and you can see this because you're so up high, all the way up to the volcano, which must be how the ship was pulled up here uh, by someone for some purpose. I'm, I'm gonna take a wild guess and say the ship is heavier than a thousand pounds. Sure is. <laughs> that would be too easy. Are the forts like still there? Darn Garisha. Yeah, as you as you look down on That's the what island, I was thinking. It was like if the forest. Yeah. You can see that there are patches where like the forest, like the tops of the tropical trees, are poking up above this greenish substance that coats most of the island now. Uh, so the forests are still there, and there's like still objects poking up that uh, reveal the geography of the island, but a good portion of it is just covered. Can I reach down with mage hand and like stick my mage hand finger in the green slime? Yeah, and you uh, pull the mage hand back up, and the substance is just uh, like stringily caught to it. Wait a second. Just sort of. What about squelch was, up? Was Marat this similar substance? He was like a frogger oh. creature. Okay, he didn't have that slimy. Um, uh, he had like slimy skin. Do but... I recognize, or can I guess what the substance is? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's very clearly a slime of some kind. Okay, chill bones. Uh, and as Dragon you're Dragon getting a good look around and sort of as you pull up the uh, slime, you hear a sound from the mast, uh, and it draws your all of your attention instantly up in that direction, uh, and the sound is just uh, a single word. Ow! Oh god. <laughs> And you see up there, perched on top of the mast, a uh, colorful uh, tropical parrot of some kind, <laughs> uh, with its 
uh, green and blue and red feathers. Well, we have to... This is not where the ship is supposed to be. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Does it look like... If the ship got a little bit of a nudge, would it, like, yeah, it's, slide it's, down? It's the... tilting a little bit. Like, it's listening back and forth. Because, like, I could create a tidal wave to push us off the top of the mountain, and then we can just ride the slime down into the ocean. You know, the, ship, the shape of the ship, though, is there any way you can curve the slime to come around it to support it? Because if we just push it down, it's just going to capsize. Oh, I see what you mean. It would have to be deep, deep slime. Deep slime. Yeah. I mean, it's deep enough that it's covering some of the trees, I'm certain. Yeah, it's deep yeah. slime. <laughs> that's Mara, my that's my idea. Anybody Mara, you else sort of got any walk bright around ideas? The ship and you can see that the ship is entirely intact. Like the rudders there, everything looks like it would work just fine. So you're just in a very inopportune position. We it's we have I guess that option. We can also have wait for the geyser to shoot water out and. I feel like that might destroy the ship before it. Like, Maybe. who would do this? I don't know. I'm thinking. Thing would do this at all. The god of this world is just <laughs> a sick person. <laughs> I don't know. This feels like something. It feels like almost like a magpie collecting things and bringing it back to its nest, only much more disgusting. Maybe we should look for the source of this mischief. I, I, first. Know. Let's get the, I think we should get the ship back in the water. I think we should wait. Yeah, so Hunter, you want to walk around and sort of look for yes. anything that would indicate what put this in this location? Sure. Yeah. Roll a perception check. Uh, uh, my okay. My passive perception is really high. I don't know if that if we can use that instead. Roll an active one, and we'll see. Right. That's yeah. That's, that's better. Good. That's a twenty-five. A rule we've used in. The campaign before that I kind of like is if you roll lower than your passive perception, you can take the passive. Oh, okay, sure. So 25. Uh, yeah. You look around the ship, sort of going from side to side and trying to be careful not to like rock the boat too much in one direction or another. Um, and when you get to the back of the boat, um, the ship lists backwards a little bit and a, li a bit of rubble from the edge of the volcano goes <laughs> clattering down the volcano's caldera and into black oblivion. Um, and as if alerted by that sound, you spot uh, a group of creatures whose attention has now been turned in your direction uh, uh, on the uh, opposing side of the volcano from where you're at. Uh, but now beginning to slowly climb in this direction, not slowly, but beginning to climb in this direction, uh, you see the uh, hulking bull-like form of a familiar demon. Oh no. Um, oh no. Its, hor its massive horns twisting and, and adorned with gold jewelry. Uh, its hooves the size of a uh, grown man, maybe two grown men. Uh, and it is accompanied by several black fur minotaurs of sorts. Uh, and even from this distance, you can see fire flickering in their eyes. And they are beginning to make rapid uh, ascension on the volcano and, in this direction. Okay, so I'll yell back and be like, guys, Garistro! Oh god, I can still do the tidal wave thing! We can make a real fast retreat! Eventually, Garistro first. Uh, but I, he has to be within 60 feet. Oh, okay, then don't do that. I can't, I can't banish him until he's right there. Then let's just go. Yeah, let's go. All right, I'm gonna... <laughs> cast Tidal Wave? Not so <laughs> get my ship on my back! Why did everybody cast Tidal Wave at the She's back the of the ship and push it forward? Aye, aye, okay. Captain! Uh, you cast the spell, conjuring a great wave of water out of thin air, uh, which then pushes the back of the ship forward. And there's a slow groaning creak as it begins to that tilt. Just holds on to our line. Yeah, yeah hold hold on. On As the ship begins to tilt and fall back down the sloping, uh, slimy slide that this volcano has become. Try uh, to steer it. Yeah, you're on the wheel. You're ready to steer it. <laughs> what I need is an initiative roll from whoever has the best initiative score among you. That's almost certainly Mara. I figured you'd have plus seven. Plus seven. Yeah. Okay. So you roll initiative. 
Seventeen. Okay. Uh, can you write it on a card and hand it to me? Uh, and we are going to do a chase sequence. Oh, boy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Uh, with there being two participants at this point in this chase, uh, which is the group of you aboard the Drowning Kiss as it slides down this volcano, and the Garistro and his Minotaur lackeys, who are now following maybe about, um, it looks like, uh, 120 feet off or something like that. Uh, the group of you have the first action as the boat tilts onto the slope of the volcano and begins to slowly at first, but picking up speed as it goes, slide down the viscous slime. What would the group of you like to do? I'm going to stand at the back of the ship and if the Garistro gets within 60 feet of us, I'm going to cast Banishment. Okay. That's my, that's my plan. Does I've he... done my duty. I've gotten us off the top what, of the volcano. What size category are these creatures? The Garistro is huge. Okay. The Minotaurs are large. Okay. I guess I would like to shoot at them with my bow. Okay, sure. How many Minotaurs are there? Looks like about ten. Jesus. Oh, you said a few, man. Ten, ten is not a few. few. There's a significant amount of minotaurs. <laughs> right, let's see. I can banish up to three, three creatures. Well, I don't know if we can take them out. So that might be worth it. Go ahead and take your shot. So whoever you want to shoot at. Yep, I'll shoot at the minotaur lackeys. So I'll do. I'll set. Use my scope, sharpshooter, all that stuff. We got, Whoa. that's 19 to hit. Uh, that'll hit. Okay, that's the first one. 18 to hit. Hits. And, oh, what is this one? Oh, that's actually weird. in the group. It is in the group. I'm going to read it. It's totally that's fine. Strange. Okay, that's a 22. Okay, hits. Okay, and so I will just do, I think I'll do straight damage on these ones. Let's see what we get. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens. 14 plus 14 plus 54 is 68. Okay. So that's 68 piercing damage in one minute arc. Uh, yeah. Like one arrow embeds itself in the shoulder, one right in the chest, and then the other one uh, right, in the right in the leg. And you can see it buckles it a little bit, but then it gets back up, and the, you can see the fire in its eyes is blazing all the stronger, uh, and it continues to charge after you. Uh, 68. And Anything then, from Mara and Thaddeus? Yeah, Thaddeus is going to cast uh, Mind Greater Speed. Okay. And summon Moonlight Sparkle. All right. Mind does that take? Oh, actually, yeah, you're right. Is it an action or is it? I thought it was an action, but it might not. I feel like the summoning was longer. The usual longer. Longer, right. Can I, can I hand Kaneko a short bow as well? Yeah, sure. Okay. It's a casting time of 10 minutes. Okay. I have So yeah, since it's 10 minutes, you, you're not going to be able to It's a 10 minute one. one. Uh, or you could, because it's going to be a, a long chase. So I mean, you could spend... I mean, but that's going to be a yeah, whole chase. You're right. Yeah, there's no... I'm not going to do that. Um, hmm. I don't think I have an action yet. Well, that's fine. Uh, anything from Mara? Uh, I probably need to steer, steer the ship. Okay, so you're just going to focus on steering it? Yeah. Which uh, will become important because uh, as you begin to make your descent down the slope, you can see that there are plenty, like as you get a better view of it, you can see that there are plenty of obstacles. And actually there's a, place, there's a couple places where the path converges uh, that okay. is going to require you to steer. Uh, so you just kind of grit your teeth and get ready for that. Uh, would one of you roll a d20? I need to know if your pursuers have any obstacles in their way. One of you roll a d20. We'll go right Five? Five, okay. Um, you watch as, as the pursuers begin to make it onto the downward slope and get after you, uh, at moving at an incredible pace, uh, faster than any human could run. Um, a swarm of creatures erupts from a, uh, like a, a, the tops of a tree that is, uh, extending from the slime, 
uh, and Harmony, you recognize these creatures. You recognize them. Uh, they are the bat wings and human head creatures that you've seen on this island oh, before. Oh, motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> and I need to make some saving throws here and see if anyone fails it. All of them fail it. Yeah. I think it's a wisdom save. Yeah, get yes. out of here. DC 12. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to roll for all of them, I'm just going to roll for three. Okay, uh, so you watch as about um, uh, three of the minotaurs, uh, the uh, creatures that leap out of the trees let out that shriek that you've heard them uh, do before, and three of the minotaurs uh, hear the shriek and uh, just sort of in a dazed stupor, stand there in space um, and seem to be stopped for the moment. Uh, but then to your horror, or maybe pleasure, you watch as the uh, disembodied heads attached to these bat wings swoop in on those stunned minotaurs and kiss them and then fly away. Yep, that's what happens. Uh, the remaining minotaurs and the Goristro begin to charge in your direction, gaining a little bit of ground. Can you do anything with the ground in front of them? Yeah. To make it difficult? Yeah. And then uh, the group of you see ahead of you, uh, as you are descending the slopes of this mountain, um, a tangle of vines uh, lashing out from the, the slime and actually beginning to grab onto the bow of the drowning kiss and slow it down. Uh, so if not removed in some way by you guys, uh, these vines will cause the drowning kiss to lose uh, a bit of movement this turn. What would you guys like to do? I'm going to As the boat is being pulled to a stop. I'm going to tell Pinky to go down and see if he can shoot some of them away. Okay, uh, you hear sort of like a, con a, a sense of confusion from him in your mind, but then he uh, climbs down the side of the boat and out of sight for a moment. The boat still seems to be being pulled to a stop by these vines. Oh, jeez. Um, I'll, I'll do something about this. I'll, I'll try and climb down and, and cut away from them. Okay, so you're going to sort of lean over the edge of the boat? Yeah, I've got, I've got all my holding on to this line, so I'm like, dangle off him and try and pack away. Okay, go ahead and roll your attacks. Good, 66. Right. <laughs> oh, that's oh. a crit. Nice. Smite it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a crit and a 26. Okay, roll some damage. All right. Depending on that, we'll cut away a significant amount of these bodies, I think. Yes. So are they, they're wrapping around the entire... They're wrapping around the front of it and like pulling it to a straight okay, okay. Uh, And then as it's slowing down, you can see that the rest of the vines are beginning to creep up the sides towards you. Hmm, okay. Uh, uh, that is watch. No, that is watch. Uh, 43. 43. Uh, okay, yeah, you cut away about half of the vines and the ship begins to uh, lurch forward a bit more, but it's still at a decreased rate as the vines are still there. What about Harmony and Hunter? I will shout to Kameko and see if she can help Thaddeus with the vines as well. Hmm. That's a good point. She can help. She leans over the edge with her... Uh, all right. So she leans over it, and um, Kamiko is sort of on the other side, hacking away with the daggers, making a little bit of a dent. Okay. Can Biako probably can't get to them, right? Safely? Uh, not unless you were like tied to the ship in some way. Mm, okay. Um. Shoot. What are you? Are you going to do anything with the vines, or? Well, I'm waiting to see what you do because okay. I'm in the back of the boat. My whole plan is yeah. to. I think you can slow them down better than I can, so yeah. I'll help with the vines. And then so I'll um, bring my sword out and I will help hack away at them. Okay. Roll some attacks. Okay. 
Um, so that is, the lowest one is 16. Uh, then they all hit. Okay. And then... Trip attack! <laughs> that is 7 and 10 plus... 21... 31? Uh, with that, that is enough that the remaining vines on Thaddeus' side and uh, Hunter's side both snap, uh, and the ship lurches forward back, regaining its full speed. Oh, cool. Yes. Yes. Momentum lost. Nice job, team. Nice job. Team. All right. Uh, someone roll me a d20. Your turn. Hey, but I didn't oh. Wait. Oh, did you want to do something? I thought you were still holding. Mm. I have a rushing earth, but it's all swine behind me, so I don't think it would make a difference. What if? You can try. You can certainly try. <laughs> swine is going to fire damage, careful. I mean, any point you can see on the ground within range. I don't think the surface of the slime counts as ground. What level is this spell slot of yours? This is, well, it's from my amulet, but it's a third level spell. So. Okay. So you might as well just try it, then we'll know for sure, right? Yeah, it's an enemy to us. That's true. How far away are they right now? They're about 100 feet behind you. So it looks like they might be able to gain. How how much have they been gaining per round? Uh, well, it's only been one round so far, and it looks like they gained about 20 feet. But your ship is also gaining speed. Okay. Uh, now that you're so starting to get to my level. my main point in asking that is, does it look like they'd be able to get within 60 feet within the next round? No, probably not. So I can go ahead and cast this. So yes. I will cast. Erupting Earth, um, it's 120 feet range, so I can cast it basically mm -hmm. right in front of them. Okay. Or right on, at their feet. And what does it do? Uh, a fountain of churned earth and stone erupts in a 20-foot cube centered on that point. Each creature in that area must make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, yeah, you watch as you cast the spell out of the incantation and from beneath the slime. Uh, rocks begin to <laughs> explode out. It's right under. Um, I want to center it basically so I can get the most amount of them in that twenty foot cube. Yeah, you can probably, if you exclude the garistro, you can get a bunch of the minotaurs, or you could get the garistro and a few minotaurs. I'll do a bunch of the minotaurs. Okay. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, so they all need to make a dexterity you saving throw. Probably through. four of the remaining uh, seven. DC. 19. Um, and that ground becomes difficult terrain. Oh, I was like, where's my stat block? And I was looking right at it. <laughs> and they'll take half, it's bludgeoning damage, and they'll take half on a six, or on a six out. You see what you said? Oh, sorry. 19. Four failures. <laughs> nice. So they take 17 bludgeoning damage. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, 17 you said? Yes. Yeah. 17 bludgeoning damage. And then, Can you troll about for your enemy? Yep. And then, um, that's difficult for right now. Okay. That cube. Natural 20 on the level. Ooh, it really doesn't happen. It really doesn't happen, you know? The uh, obstacle roll is oh, 7. Okay, excellent. No. <laughs> Excellent for us, right? That's a uh, dragon ball up here who eats three of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the group of them take off. A few of the minotaurs falling a bit behind thanks to the erupting earth. Um, but the garistro and the few that are right up with the garistro forging ahead all, all the same. Uh, but you watch as they are running forward, and you can see this coming before they realize it's happened. Uh, they end up running off of a sudden drop in elevation. <laughs> uh, so someone roll me a d4. We'll see how, how big this drop is. Three. Okay, so it's a 30-foot drop oh, they end man. up running off of. Oh. Yes. See you later. Uh, and so they need to make, I think, dex saving throws? Yes. That's what they usually do. Throws. Intelligence. Uh, so let's see about these minotaurs. Uh, one... Uh, one of the minotaurs falls prone there. Uh, the rest of them manage to land on their feet, but the Garistro, let's see about him. Let's 
coffee. Uh, he also manages to land on his feet, uh, but they do take a little bit of damage. <laughs> he falls out of like shoulder level. He's like, oh. <laughs> he's like, yeah, oh. I'm <laughs> for, him, for him, it's like, oh, I skipped a step. Yeah. Uh, the, one, the one who fell prone actually doesn't get back up again because it's dead. <laughs> the last one I was shooting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah nice. nice. All right. Uh, and the rest of them just take some damage as they fall down. Uh, but then the ones that are behind them see them skidding, uh, see them fall off that edge and sort of take a path around that descends down in a safer way. Uh, let's and they gain ten feet on you that round, putting them at ninety. As you guys are uh, picking up speed now that you're descending, floor it, Mara. About to reach <laughs> terminal velocity. <laughs> That's not right, though. Start yeah. rowing. Uh, and there are no obstacles in the path this round. Anything you want to do? So, so. I uh, climb back into the boat. Okay, yeah. Uh, go ahead and make a athletics check. Uh, Kamiko will do the same. Kamiko with a 19 on dice easily climbs back into the boat. Um, I got an 11. 11. It's tough, okay. but you do manage to get back into the boat. We'll say that takes your action for this round. Very good. <laughs> if I can, I'd like to get back to the back of the ship and shoot them again. Okay. Uh, you're moving at a rate, and it's a bumpy enough ride now that you aren't going to get bonus for placing your great bow, unfortunately. Oh, okay. So like, there's, there's no solid ground for you to place this thing on. Okay, that's fine. So no advantage? Yeah, essentially. I see. Because you can still use your scope, but you just don't have a place okay. to place the scope. That's fine. So just a regular That's okay, then. Then, uh, well, let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. So I want to shoot at the... I want to shoot the Garisto. I'll shoot the Garisto. Wait, we're going to try and manage the Garisto. Yeah, but if I can't get him to get something to happen here, maybe... That we don't have to use banning or, or like worry about that, but no, I was just sit in the first. That's fine. Okay. Um. So the lowest roll is a twenty-two. Uh, against the barista. Minotaurs. Minotaurs. Yes, that's a hit. All of them. Okay. So one four minotaur will take less than average damage. Oh. Uh, he'll take sixty-four damage. Dang. Okay. Uh, that Minotaur looks like he is barely alive. Right. Um, at this point, you can see also that the Minotaurs who were uh, stunned momentarily and kissed by the uh, flying bat creatures are beginning to uh, re- they're, they're closing in on the other Minotaurs, trying to catch up. Anything else from the rest of you? Just here for your life? Yep. yep. I am... Preparing to vanish the Garistro when it gets close enough. Okay. He's still 90 feet behind at this point. Yeah. He just needs to get within 60 feet. Alright, then someone roll me a d20. Get him. 12. 12. Okay, so no obstacles, and uh, they continue to advance, uh, gaining another 10 feet and get up to 80 feet behind you. Uh, I thought we were picking up speed. Uh, you are, but it's incremental. It's not like 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet. Never mind. It, it works out, trust me. One more round and you'll be at full speed. Judges? And then it will be full speed. Alright, let's see about... Your turn. Oh, there is an obstacle for you. This is the weirdest thing I've ever encountered! <laughs> Uh, the drowning kiss runs over uh, with a thump, a uh, another clump of like treetops, uh, and there's a uh, as another swarm of these battling oh, creatures no. erupts around the drowning kiss this time, and I need everyone on there to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, you at least are in my line. Are you in the back, in the back of the ship? ship. I'm, I'm standing next to you. I'm in the back then of the ship he's as well. Back next to you. I think Mara doesn't get this. Yeah. Isn't the, Where's the steering thing? Yeah, I mean, the, the steering's in the back, so if you're all gathered around the oh, back okay. with Mara. That's all right. right. Yeah. It's a wisdom save? Mm hmm. All right, I'll get plus four to Plus four. Okay. So that is 16. Okay, 16 passes. Oh, I got a 31. <laughs> okay, <laughs> passes. <laughs> you pass for the rest of us. I got a 17. Passes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
So 15 glasses. Yep. Go, yes. Oh, cute. Uh, 15? Passes. Yep. Nice. So the creatures shriek and swarm around you, but uh, to no avail. Uh, you sort of bat your way out of them, and the drowning kiss descends. Does the, the drowning kiss kiss them? Uh, no. <laughs> no uh, though it does, you hear like a satisfying crunch as it runs over a few. Oh, of yeah. Them. Sure. <laughs> nice job, Mara. Yeah. That's the yeah. best experience that I've ever made it to. Yeah. And Trophy. the drowning kiss, I think, is at this point. Drowning kiss gets a crummy. Uh, um, someone roll for a obstacle for your pose. Right. Oh, yeah. Two. Okay. Man, I wanted you guys to get this one. It could still come up. Um, you, well, let's see. Let's see. If, I, actually, I don't think this one will affect them. We'll see. They're pretty strong. Uh, their strength saving throw. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. And the grease throw. Yep. Uh, so you watch as uh, momentarily they are obstructed by something. There's like some something you can't see that uh, seems to stop them for a second, but then they just lower their horns, charge forward, oh my God. Uh, and continue at full pace uh, down the the slope after you. But at this point, they're not gaining any more ground. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Good. Uh, because you seem to be charging at exactly the same pace as they are. Uh, oh. Uh, and there's no obstacle for you guys. How far away is the sea at this point? Uh, still quite a ways away. Okay. Uh, like there are several miles between the volcano oh, gosh, and yeah. the. Okay. Uh, so w the, each of these rounds doesn't necessarily represent exactly six seconds. Okay. Uh, but you are still a ways away from the sea. Okay. Anything you guys would like to do on this round? I'm shooting them. Okay. Uh, at this point, using the. Uh, dash action, and that you watch uh, also the ones that had fallen behind um, also are they're dashing, but also each every few seconds they're able to somehow um, in a, like a blaze of fire teleport slightly forward. Oh. Uh, so they actually manage to regain ground and catch up with the, the Ristro and oh, the rest of the Minotaur. Alright, um, shoot Minotaurs. Okay. One of them looks very wounded. Yes, I will... Piece that out. Oh, what is it about? Um, I got my. I got a twelve on one Misses. of those. Okay. And then the next lowest one, an eighteen. Uh, hits. Okay. So I have two hits. Uh, I'll do one attack against the weak one. Okay. Which is a thirty. Yes. Thirty damage. Okay. Uh, that catches him in like the the neck, and you can see the arrow embed itself and stick out from the other side, and he just falls over backwards. Okay. Then uh, I'll fire a fresh one at. I need to get this out so you guys can look at it. Really cool. There's your Garistro, buddy. Oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, that is 26 damage for another one. Where's my boat? I didn't bring enough of that. Okay. Uh, then, anything else from any of you? Uh, no, I think I'm just still sitting next to Harmony. I'm gonna use telekinesis to pull trees up from under the slime mm. to block their way. Okay, kind sure. Of Throw trees path. at them. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and roll just a charisma check then. Okay. I was gonna. I looked Charmed up the trees. I looked up the rules for haste, but you can't cast on inanimate objects. Oh. <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. <laughs> That would be a factor I didn't consider in this episode. So just a charisma check. Uh -huh. oh. I'm going to try to chaos. <laughs> oh no! Better. Okay. Better. Right. 17. Okay. Uh, you pull up uh, trees and also a boulder and uh, set those up in their path and we will see how they manage to do. Um, I think the Goristro uh, lowers its head and is going to try and break through that. Well, actually, uh, I realized I also need an obstacle roll in addition to that. Yeah, eat that 15. 15. Uh, so that's no obstacle. Uh, but the Garistro lowers its head and tries to barge its way through 
the uh, rocks uh, and rolls a 19 on dice for its strength check, which is plus a bunch. Uh, so 26. Uh, it unfortunately barges through the um, the obstacle you created, but that puts it a little ways behind the minotaurs, who then take uh, a bit of a step ahead of it. Um, and it doesn't actually gain on you. In fact, it loses, I'll say, 10 feet. Right. Okay. That action. Okay. Uh, and then that's their turn. Uh, so there's, again, no obstacle in your way. Uh, but Mara, looking ahead of you, you see that you have uh, a branch where there's a location of there's almost like a, a gully where there's like no slime, just a bunch of rocks sticking out. Oh, shit. Um, that divides the path into two. Uh -oh. Looking down, you can see that uh, there's roughly speaking two options uh, in terms of uh, like uh, Captain Skills. You have to make a choice here. Um, the path on the left. Oh, no. The path on the left seems to wend a little bit longer. Um, and it seems like it will probably extend the distance from here <laughs> to the shore, uh, perhaps making the chase go on a little bit longer. The other path seems a bit more treacherous. You can see like rocks jutting out from it in different locations that will require um, navigating. Otherwise, uh, the drowning kiss might might take some damage to the hull. I was trying to go. Skills. We believe in you, it's Captain. A, it's a shorter right, path with some risk it. or a longer path. This is very until dawn, I was just saying, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Butterfly this book. Yeah. <laughs> um, circle. X. Circle. All right, so Mara, you turn the wheel hard to the right, and the rudder responds, turning the drowning kiss, uh, almost like listing entirely sideways as it tries to make that turn, uh, and the group of you find yourselves on the rightward path. Um, so now, Mara, each turn you're going to need to make a. Um, oh, sorry, this is going to be a group thing each turn. Uh, you need to make a either water vehicles, which is what Mara will do, or acrobatics or athletics check of a certain DC, uh, or uh, incur a little bit of little bit of uh, trouble. So. Uh, before we get to what you want to do on this turn, uh, let's have everyone make that point. So individually, mm -hmm. we're making. But it's like a group check. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. I see. I'm so wrong. Athletics. athletics or acrobatics for us, and then you have to make your water vehicle check. Yeah, which is going to be dexterity plus proficiency. Which you can't roll out lower than ten. Exactly. So Mara's pretty much a guaranteed success. So I don't have to roll. You should roll Because it's like an average type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well. And I'll, I'll say if you get like a natural 20, you can avoid making anyone roll. Okay. Do you roll already? I haven't rolled yet, no. Do you want Yaka to roll? You, go ahead and you roll first. Because like you said, if you get a natural 20, you never do. Oh. Wow, you guys. She rolled a 10. Get your shit out of that bowl. Get that shitty number. <laughs> Okay. You all the bad out of it? Oh, Much better. Yeah, you did. Wow. <laughs> Keep that in. Keep it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, but you, I mean, that's basically a 10. I know. Plus whatever your bonuses are. Mara's a 10 plus proficiency plus dex. So, so, that's, so your dex is plus 5 and your proficiency is plus 5. five so, yeah, 20. 20. Okay. 15. Okay. 18. Mine is math um, 24. 24, okay. Uh, so between the group of you, as uh, Mara is suddenly having to shout orders to get the rest of you to participate in making sure this ship doesn't crash, uh, work together, pulling rigging, uh, leaning the boat to one side, like physically with your weight whenever necessary, uh, you manage to navigate the first such stretch of this uh, without su uh, causing the drowning kiss to suffer any damage. Like <laughs> <laughs> so you can't roll under a 20, basically. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. So now, is there anything else that you would like to do with your turn? So I think I think I'm gonna cast 
I mean, this isn't going to help a lot, but I'm going to cast Moonlight behind us. Hmm. So they have to run through this patch of Moonlight. Take a little bit of damage. Yeah. Sure. Um, how far are the Minotaurs behind us now? The Minotaurs are 80 feet. The Garistro is 90. Okay. I think I'll just do the telekinesis thing again. Okay. Roll another uh, charisma check. Okay. Moon. That's it. Yeah. Natural 20! Okay. 25. Which adds up to 25. Yeah. yeah. No, what are you doing? I'm doing the tele- telekinesis obstacle course thing again. Can I shoot again? Yeah, or are sure. we preoccupied? Okay. Shoot thrice at the mid cars. Oh no. A two. That's a 10. And then the next height is 21. Well, the 21 will hit. Yep, okay, so I'll get two big ones on here. Um, below average. Way below average. Mediocre. Mediocre. <laughs> That's uh, 42 damage. 42, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Against the next most wound is flying. Uh, a third minotaur goes down. For yes! No, right. Taking them down. Um, um, there's only a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> the Minotaurs like now being the ones ahead have to try to uh, clear that blockage from Harmony. Actually, would one of you roll a uh, d20 to see about okay. okay. obstacles? Mm-hmm. Three. Ooh, get them. Three. Kiss them, dads. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting. Um, they begin to run forward and uh, head towards the, the blockage you've created in their way and tr- like put their heads low to try and clear that out. Uh, and as they do so, let's see if something happens to them. Uh, one of them, you watch, of the remaining, let's see, so 10 total, three are gone. Um, seven, one of them, uh, seems to slip on a particularly uh, like wet patch of slime and completely bites it, falling prone on the ground, uh, and then being left in the dust of the other six that continue to charge forward. Did any of them run through the moon? Uh, I'm getting to that. Okay. Harmony's obstacle and then the moon. Gotcha. Harmony's laughing. Uh, the obstacle seems to stop the minotaurs back, uh, so we'll say nice. they don't gain any ground, actually. They are at. Uh, they fall quite a ways behind. Uh, but then the Garistro charges and <laughs> straight through the breaks and breaking the barrier and runs into the Moonbeam. Nice. Uh, so it's what kind of save? A uh, con save. Okay. It's really good at these. I bet. 23. Yeah, that'll, that'll do it, but it's going to take half of the gym. Oh, he has, he has magic resistance. Cool. Even better. <laughs> Well, he takes uh, half. Thirty-two. Of, he takes half of twenty rating oh, damage. Okay. Uh, nice. He yes, doesn't resist do. that. So, half of twenty-two. You said half of twenty. Okay, so damage. Uh, he looks completely undaunted by that as he uh, charges forward. Um, how how much? Uh, how, how about how far are they moving each time? Uh, they are moving at a full dash, uh, like eighty feet. Okay. So that's one. Because I can move it up to 60 feet and that's not going to help me at all. Yeah, no, he's, uh, even, he charges through it and then he's way ahead of it at that point. Um, you could probably, you can still catch the Minotaurs when they catch up on the next turn. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my actions to keep pulling it towards. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anything from the rest of you? No, I already did mine. We already did. Okay. Yeah. Mara's steering. Then let's see about obstacles for you. Ooh, there's something. Oh boy. Um, I know. Save us, Captain. Uh, Save us, Captain. Uh, from the left of the drowning kiss, uh, behind some rocks that you were going by on the side, uh, you hear a loud, like a hollering sound. Uh, as these, Captain. Bar- these large, uh, barrel-chested, monkey-like creatures, you've seen them before, oh, these, uh, these orange-furred, orange uh, monkey-like demons with blue skin uh, come out maybe about 10 feet behind the drowning kiss and begin to join the chase. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> cool. 
school. I'm pretty sure we're not in some kind of nightmare right now, but what did you do to us, Harmony? Let's see, that was another... This could be all part of my chaos magic. We could all wake up on the deck of the ship and be completely like. Did you teleport us or we have another dream council? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then... <laughs> I don't know. Yes, this is the one I've been waiting for. Wait, is it? Is it? Oh, it's kind of funny. Uh, they roll at the end of their turn for your obstacle. Yeah. Okay. We roll our turn. Um, uh, there's a low rumble, uh, and the entire island begins to shake. It's a familiar sensation. Oh, right? boy. As uh, you watch, your eyes all look pulled towards the volcano, uh, the, the caldera of the volcano, which is now quite a ways behind you. You're maybe like halfway to the beach. Um, but there is a <laughs> as hot water erupts from the top of the volcano. Um, and coming with it, you can see, uh, floating in the water up into the air and then carried, dispersed out across the island are big wads of clear slime. Oh, gosh. Um, like, and when I say big, I mean, I mean huge, like, uh, how big is that? 5, 10, 15, 20, like 20 foot on a side, wads of spherical slime. And one of them comes uh, streaking down through the air and with insane precision, just globs onto the drowning kiss. Oh, no. uh, and as the drowning kiss is engulfed in this slime, it then begins to tumble head over. Oh no! Uh, oh with my the mask gosh. Being, uh, Like engulfed in the slime as well. You're just a bowl of slime uh, rolling down the hill. Uh, Top and down uh, being inverted suddenly. But it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> because somehow, swimming in the slime, uh, you witness a large shark uh, beginning to uh, no. swim in your direction. Like, no way. I remember, that is, now I remember this thing. So oh my it. god. I have to pull out my stats for the shark bowl, please. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh Why is god. this a thing? Why does this exist? Oh my god, that's incredible. Oh my god. Uh, so as you are all engulfed, I need you each to make a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity saving throw. That's my, my best time. Oh my god. Oh, why? I ha you're having a day. I got a 18. 18, okay. Uh, so if you, you get higher sure. than a 16, you can actually choose to be pushed out of the slime, but you would leave the drowning kiss at that point. Mm. Ah. Mm -hmm. So you get a choice if you get higher than a 16. I get 14. Okay, so you're stuck inside. So. Yeah, I got a 21. I'm you want to. Alright, so you stay at the wheel. Put my. Uh, no, I put on. Oh, you can't wait for it. You already have it on. It's uh, not water, okay. it's booze. I'm not sure how it works. Well, I know. So can we breathe? Or uh, no, you seem to lose your lose yeah. your supply of air. Okay, well that is he gonna as soon as he's able, because he doesn't have a choice, he rolled a six on his check. Uh, he's gonna down his push in the water breathing. Okay. Um, can I can function sure. okay? <laughs> yeah, you can function fine. Okay. Uh did anyone want who passed so, want to leave the drowning kids? Well, why would I want Yeah, if, if we left then we would actually we would have to run separated. away from the current crowd. Run behind. No, I'm staying with the ship. Yeah, yeah. No. that's what I figured. But yeah. you get the choice for the for the wording of this creature's set. Okay. Uh, in that case, so funny. <laughs> uh, everyone who is engulfed in there uh, takes uh, 22 acid damage. Woo! Oh dang! Uh, and then you may take your turns. Can I see the picture again? Yeah. So good. Oh my god, look at that thing. It's beautiful. Alright, well, I think this. It's a giant shark bowl. I think this that calls is... for a vanish spell. Sure. I'm gonna wait till the ship. Is the ship kind of spinning in the ooze, or are we just constantly. Yeah, it's, over... it's spinning and like head over heels. So I'm gonna time it for when we're right side right up again, side up. and then okay. I'm gonna cast vanishment on the ooze. Okay. Uh, also, my wild ahead. magic so... goes off. Go ahead and give me a, we'll say, an intelligence check to get the timing right. My okay. head's gonna explode. I'm gonna, can I cast? This shit's gonna explode. As a reaction, absorb elements and take half of the acid damage. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh -oh. And then I get an extra. Six. Damage. Six? On <laughs> oh, my intelligence. Alright. 
yeah, you okay. cast the spell. Let's find out if it actually gets banished. It's what kind of save? Uh, it's a charisma save, I believe. Let me check. Yeah, it's a charisma save. Okay. Uh, it fails. Good. Uh, so the, the ooze around you, uh, in, and the shark as well, they appear to be like symbiotically bonded as one creature. Um, <laughs> are banished to some <laughs> plane elsewhere in the world. Uh, but unfortunately, Harmony's timing isn't great, and the ship was about at a 90 degree angle, and oh, it just no. <laughs> buds down into the ground, and then lurches forward, uh, but it's going to take a bit of damage. Meanwhile... It's probably going to take us some time to get back up to speed. Oh my god, a shark bowl. Meanwhile. So good. I love that. Oh, yeah. Also, while magic happened. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out which, which thing happened. Okay. This is a mess. This is amazing. Giant Kiss takes 15 damage. That's it. Oh. Get out the carpenter's tools. I know, I'll have to do some repairs. Just to get. Uh, let's do. Let's do. Let's do. Where's that slime? I'm going to do 37, because we've never gotten that one before. Oh boy, okay, sure. <laughs> Oh. It's been a long time since the last magic has gone off. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, excited. Yeah. Uh, anything, <laughs> anyone else want to do anything on that turn? Um, the ship eventually does like right itself and begin to slide again uh, downwards. But at that point, the uh, monkey-like creatures that were pursuing you have climbed up onto the back of the ship, so they're up on the drowning kiss with you. I am gonna start attacking them. I will just, also attack okay. them. Go for it. Does a 15 hit? I think it will just give me a second. I need to look at the spell I haven't used it yet. They're demons, right? Yes. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> you said 17? 15. 15. 15 just hits. That's okay. very easy. Uh, do I need to separate out the cold? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm just so I got two hits for uh, uh, 20 cold damage. Okay. And 18 radiant damage. Okay. And it uh, opens its mouth and it bears its tank, uh, its tusks at you and goes, Runs! a pistol split. Uh, split, spit, uh, flies all over your face um, as it takes that damage. Oh, gross. <laughs> Are we still all slimy from being in the slime, or did the well, I think the slime clean? was banished with it. Yeah, so, okay, yeah you're clean. Works. You're good. Okay. All right. Well, here we go. I got my lowest roll is a seventeen. This so is against the monkey creatures. The monkey creatures. Uh, is it with a sword? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, your it's a magic sword. Your attacks all hit. Okay. So oh, that's right. Your sword is magic. The first one is going to do acid damage extra, which is 7 plus 7, 14. Okay. And then the next two are just regular damage, which is 9 plus 14, which is what is that? 23, thanks. Uh, that is just enough believe it or not, to kill one of these monkey creatures. Nice. Okay. Oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and its body, you can kind of just like kick its body off the back of the I ship do. as you begin to slide forward again. I do. Uh, I think that's Problems. it for the group of you. Does someone roll a obstacle check? Uh, Me? Yeah. Yeah. 16. 16. Let's see. Uh, that's no complication for them, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Uh, boy, so let's no see. Sharp balls. The Maestro is 90 behind, the Minotaurs are 120, but uh, with the slowed down drowning kiss, they are able to catch up. The Minotaur, or the Garistro now 70 feet behind, the Minotaur is now 100 feet behind. It's alright. Uh, and the Barogura monkey demons, let's see, right next to Hunter and Thaddeus. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could, like, jump out and cast it and then click and spell it. Well, and the thing, is, the thing is, when I, if I cast Banish on the Garistro, then the, the shark thing's gonna come back. But I don't know. But it, like, it was in its current position. It'll be right? in the position that it left. Can you then cancel it when they're gonna pass through? 
Huh? Let me cast it. Sure. Or I can release my concentration on the spell when everyone else is in that area. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a good call. That's right. what I'm going to do. Um, Thaddeus, the monkey, is going to focus its attacks on to, you. I have to remember our marker when we were talking late. <laughs> and it's going to make these attacks reckless. So if you attack it, if any of you attack it next turn, you're going to get advantage. Cool. Okay. Attack the Grace Crab? The monkey. Oh, the monkey. Bite. Two twos on the dice, so that's not a hit. Okay. And then two fist attacks. Uh, that's a 25. Yeah, I think that would get me with shield, so I'm not going to. And a 15 plus 7, 23. Yeah, well, what am I, I'm not going to have on my shield, so yeah, one of those hits. Okay. Uh, that is seven points of wedding damage as one of its big fists collides with you, and it just, like, uh, and then pounds its chest <laughs> threateningly at you. It throws drums at us too. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's uh, I never did before because I because I really needed those, that force of this one. Yeah. I've got a little bit of leeway. Yeah. There's no obstacle for you, Bess. You're gonna pick up a little bit of speed. Uh, anything you guys want to do on your turn? How many apes are on the ship? Just one ape on the ship right now. He's large. So you yep. guys like your wings? I like this plan. Is he plan. next to the edge of the ship? Uh, ish, yeah. Can I shove him? Yeah, you want to try to just push him off? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm just gonna shove him. I got uh, I'm gonna attack another one. Okay, sure. We should try to keep one, guys. Those monkey brains are really good. Gross. So Not that is, you're attacking it as Hunter's gonna push it off. Well, I thought there was two more. No, uh, no, there's, there's, one. there's two. There there's were two, two total, total and one. Inside. Oh, okay. Yeah, you go for. I'm just gonna convert my attacks to shoves. I think. Okay, hang on. So that's a sixteen. Uh, to his. I think that's why well, it's, right. it's a it's an opposed to check. Yeah. So uh, so his strength is oh unless you have like an ability. So I thought you could convert an uh, attack to a shove. Yes, which becomes an opposed check. Okay, okay that's fine. Uh, so it's athletics it. or acrobatics. Okay, so then my if that's I rolled a four, so that would be fifteen okay, for the well, athletics. The twenty one total. And I'll try it again. That one is a twenty four. Okay, so with the second one. You managed to <laughs> shove him off, and he's now uh, tumbling along the ground behind the ship. Okay. I'm gonna be like, you know, these ships might make me shut up. Watch the spot where we were, mm -hmm. and when Grease and Minotaurs enter, I'm gonna release the my hold on the banishment spell. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, you want to attempt to banish where you want to get them. Well, let's see what happens yeah, first. Exactly. I don't mind if you attempt it, if that's what you want to do. Leaves me free to do other things. Um, well, let's see what happens. Yeah. The Minotaurs will move into that on their turn, so we'll resolve that in a second. Okay. Anything else? You're waiting to see um, how that goes out? I'm just going to hold the banishment, yeah. I guess. Okay. He has to be within 60 feet, though, so yeah. he's not then quite there yet. Somebody give he's me about an to. obstacle. Uh, Is that you? Was it Mom? Oh, no, it's Mom. It's the captain's turn. Go, oh, Captain. I don't know. It's our brains got okay. split. It's because you're going to cast it's all that, it's it's all like, that wild what? magic. What is happening over here? Uh, they are going to Freaky suffer Friday. an obstacle. Uh, but yes. I remembered also since we're on the rocky path, I need that group check. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're on a side of boat. <laughs> so it's an athletics. Yep. Uh, or acrobatics. I can smell. The oh, oh my gosh. Approach damage. It's okay. We're strong. Oh fuck! <laughs> hey, but I have my tides of chaos back. Oh thank goodness. Do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still not great, but I did need it. And this is athletic. This die, no, this die no, has more than water 20 and one water tap. Which is? It's a dex plus proficiency. So you get plus dex. So that's 20. Yeah, I don't know. Waxed. What did I do again? I got 18. Oh, uh, 11. Uh, 12. No, do I get your bonus? Yeah. Oh, no, it's not a save. It's not a save. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, you're right. 12. 12. Okay. Um,. Unfortunately, well, actually, that's an even success. So, uh, because I was two successes. For success. yeah. uh, well, you only need two to get oh, a success okay. on a group check, since there's four of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. And Melissa's an automatic success. 
Mm. Uh, so that's true. With uh, deft but like slightly panicked skills, since there are now things closer to you now, uh, but you manage to get the drowning kiss righted and keep it along a path that keeps it from uh, suffering any more damage. Um, and then the obstacle roll was an eight for them. Uh, so you watch as um, a group of, uh, they basically end up running through a flock of low flying birds that like blood, like run into them and like uh, end up uh, basically pecking them and like bludgeoning them. Some of the birds fall out of the sky uh, and they end up taking a little bit of damage from that. Nice. Get them birds. Can you imagine if you'd been casting Find Greater CD this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you just steer the goddamn ship? <laughs> okay. Um, and then the uh, Min the Garistro is ahead of the uh, Minotaurs. Do you want to? Are they within slot? twenty feet of each other? The Minotaurs are 30 feet behind the Garistro right now. I mean, Alright, I'm going to aim for just the Minotaurs then. Try to get as many of them into that area. So you let that can. Garistro pass that area yeah. and then release your hold on banishment mm -hmm. when the Minotaurs are in there and they need to make a dexterity save. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the yeah. best, like, throw the DM shit back in his face. I want to see like, the shark start attacking them. <laughs> I know. Oh, you're in the mountain gives you a shark. I'm like, I'm like, Daddy, watch this! <laughs> What's that book called that has the shark? Creature Codex. Creature Codex. Oh, There's some really good stuff in here. Oh, God. Uh, let's see. That I mean, he's watching. His eyes are not yeah. straight from the scene behind <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah. 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 That has yeah. to be like a contest winner of some sort. I'm like, look what I can do. <laughs> look what I can do. This is like a smash move. It's like you pocketed this thing. I know, I know. Military <laughs> attack. <laughs> like yeah. I know. Pocketed ooze shark. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I picked this up off the ground. <laughs> All right. uh, oh so three of the remaining, uh, one, two, three. So there were uh, seven minotaurs total left, but three of them are engulfed by this uh, ooze that appears. Uh, unfortunately, like that's all the space. Like they're occupying the entire <laughs> ooze, uh, and you can see they sort of like unsling battle axes and are trying to like struggle against the ooze <laughs> and the shark. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. I'll take it. Struggling against the uh, shark. And then the Garistro moves within sixty feet. So then Daddy's held action as well. Yep. Yeah. Get him. He's got to make What's a crit. What's your DC? It's not terrible. It's way better than DC. Christmas save. I am working on pulling this up. So the Garistro, the one you're targeting, has magic resistance. Okay. But Christmas not its best stat. Uh, eighteen. Ah, uh, it just doesn't. Eight! Oh no, Ben Luck! Uh is there any distance for Ben Luck? Uh I think it's just a creature that I can see. Oh. I think no, we looked this up before. It's a creature yeah, that I can right. see. I want to double check. Okay. I had it written on my old character sheet and then I leveled up. Uh, <laughs> the pages are so heavy though. The creature you can see, yep. Ben the other creature you can see makes it, yep. So I'm doing Ben Lock. Oh no! I rolled a one. Okay, Wait, well but, that's enough, because it had just made it save, right? No, it was it, slightly over. It, oh, so my, my DC is a 17. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it yes. still it still makes it save this time. Nice try, nice try. It's okay. Uh, I can, have two more casts of it, yeah. So yeah. I get it. And then I'm going to roll an obstacle for you guys, and then we'll shift over to your turn. It's like, well, that was a nice try. Next time you have to put a little bit more oh. into it. All right, I'll defer to your expertise. <laughs> um, first off, I need that navigation roll. As you're navigating uh, the slide, you walk first and see if we have. And Mari, you can see as you look ahead that you're almost out of this rocky patch, but you're coming up on another branch. Oh my god. You just want to get him? No. Alright, everybody, let's do this. Team. Better. Better. Still terrible! <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, I think we got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, between Thaddeus and Mara, the group of you definitely managed to. Oh, one doesn't count as two failures, right? <laughs> No. That, was, that was my second one. Uh, the group of you managed to navigate uh, this rocky field, uh, avoiding the drowning kiss suffering any more damage, uh, and the drowning kiss is now back up to full speed, Please. as it is rocketing down the hill. Uh, you can see you're about two thirds of the way to the uh, shore, and then uh, you hear from your mast. Uh, you had almost forgotten he was there, but you hear the uh, parrot up there shout, uh oh, uh oh, and uh, you see that flock of birds has sort of curved around and is now going to swarm the deck of the drowning kiss. Oh, so I need each of you to make dexterity saving. Oh, mm -hmm. This time we do get your bonus. Yeah. Probably good, doesn't mean. <laughs> 22. <laughs> You are the unfortunate soul oh, no. uh, who suffers this effect. Uh, okay. So you take five bludgeoning damage and five piercing damage Ooh. as birds just, like tropical birds, parrots and such, just pelt into you uh, as they are in terror fleeing from these demons that they that awoke them earlier up the mountain. Um, and then... We get to make actions. Yes, you get to make actions. The Garistro is 60 feet behind you. I cast Banishment on the Garistro. Before you do but that. But before I do that. Uh, I look at Thaddeus and I'm like, I'm like, really, Fatty, what is with your hair? I mean, you look like a woman. <laughs> I look out and go, <laughs> okay. And then while the magic goes off again. All right. Uh, let's deal with Banishment first. <laughs> That was the best insult I could come up with. <laughs> I've been meaning to tell you this, that even your hair makes you look like a woman. How is that relevant to anything <laughs> happening right now? I don't know! I just had to say it! Uh, I couldn't hold it back anymore! She's right, you know. So the grease throw needs to make a saving throw? Yeah. I rolled Charisma plus two. So, oh, 13. You nice. DC was 19 that time, bitches. Um, and so, yeah, the Garistro pops out of existence nice. for the moment. I think I'm going to suggest to Harmony, get below deck. Make sure you can ride out this whole spell. Nope, not doing that one. <laughs> Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. What was the last one? <laughs> Means will think Thaddeus was wild magic. Huh? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, as as the Garistro disappears, what happens with this new role? <laughs> so good. And you said something to me, right? Uh, I said, yeah, get below deck so you can write out the spell. God, shut up! You're so annoying. Harmony's lips don't move, but you hear as it projected from her head her internal monologue. <laughs> oh my oh, god. No! I mean, come on, anyone can banish something. She's like making faces. I have like no words. idea this is happening. Yeah, like words are coming out. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we can hear your thoughts. Yeah, you oh, your thoughts. <laughs> I don't realize that they're being projected. Okay. And okay. <laughs> like, I, I'm fine where I am. Thank you, Thaddeus. But her lips don't move. No, I said, <laughs> that, I said that out loud. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I see what you're. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Anyone else have actions this turn? Uh, how, far the, okay, how far away are the? Okay, how far away are the minotaurs? The minotaurs are ninety feet behind. The monkey who has gotten to its feet is like thirty feet behind. I'm gonna stick close to Harmony and give her my shield. Okay. Until Teresa has gone forever. <laughs> I just need to hold that. I guess I can in. keep shooting. I don't know if we need to at this point. Keep going, why not? Mm -hmm. You can get that monkey. So I'm, just, I'm gonna assume you're aiming at the, the hurt minotaur or the monkey? Oh wait, didn't you have a branch to choose from? 
She'll make that. Yeah, oh, okay. Her Minotaur. Oh so, god. So much happens that like I. Uh, I know. Track. It's like what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Does an eleven hit the Minotaur? No. What about a seventeen? <laughs> yes. Okay, so one hit. Oh. Well, three. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's thirty damage. Jeez, Hunter's <laughs> usually better shooting things than that. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> as it comes out of your head. Yeah. <laughs> minotaurs. Shut up, Harmony. Still up. I didn't say anything. There are still four minotaurs in pursuit. You're not being very helpful. <laughs> You're not being very oh, helpful. Oh, they No. Oh, okay. There's still four in pursuit. All right. Um, Mara, the choice that you see before you, uh, for this last leg of the journey. Oh boy. Um. Here we go. Uh, as before, one of them seems to wind around obstacles, and what it seems like it's a longer path to the beach. Uh, the other one, uh, you can see, is uh, like your path ahead. There are um, like bubbles of slime that are popping up, and seem to be taking sentient movement towards you up the mountain. Uh, and also, you can see coming out of the tops of trees there, uh, various other. Uh, monkey-like demon creatures. So one path is filled with other things that could join the chase. The other path is a little bit of a longer, longer trail. Okay, wait, this is time out. Just for the bubbles. I'm trying to hurt. You're the captain. You're the captain. You're the captain. You're the captain. So she yells. Are so you steer far forward? to the left. All right. The boat tilts again, almost completely on its side. The group of you have to hang on to it. Uh, I promise you I wouldn't die. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, My internal monologue is. Someone roll me an obstacle check. What would you promise? A uh, bunch of land lovers. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. Uh, so that's no obstacle. Yeah, for this case. Okay. Uh, the minotaurs continue their pursuit. The uh, gorilla like creature, I think, can actually do something. Uh, yeah, it can extend its. Uh, movement by doing a long jump. So it takes a big bounding run, and especially with the like height difference of the slope, it takes a leap forward and lands again on the back of the ship next to... You again. Who's, who was <laughs> on the back of the ship? I think uh, all of us. All of us, pretty much. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's one, two, three, four. I told so you So Mara's the one who's not getting attacked. Uh, here's the, the bite against that? Thaddeus. Yeah. Uh, he's making it recklessly. You can hang my shield, right? Yes. What, what is that, a bonus? Plus three to okay. So that's 24 against Thaddeus. Oh uh, yeah, no. This gorilla creature is basically hanging onto the back of the boat, uh, like its head above the uh, top of it, just and it bites at you. Um, you're going to take, for the bite, uh, seven, 11 piercing damage. Uh, and then it will take one of its fists off and swing it at Harmony. Natural 20, of course. Are you fucking kidding me? Why? I mean, even at this point, you've taken the grease throw out of the race because it's so far back. Uh, and then it can I, Wait, can I bend luck its natural 20 to make it not a natural 20, or does it still count? It still counts as a natural 20, I believe. Uh, and so what is that total? I didn't do the damage yet. Hold no, on. no, no. What's the hit? Uh, 27. Um, I mean, because I could have gotten up to a 22, and it's the right. highest my AC has ever been. <laughs> and it doesn't uh, so that's fucking matter. 14 bludgeon, sorry, it's a natural 20, so I need to double damage dice. Um, 23 bludgeoning damage, right. as you get just blindsided by a fist. 23? Yeah. What was that concentration? Yeah, hold on. I think it's just 11, right? Yeah, it's I still just it. 11. He's so. He's got this. You got this. You pass or fail the Garistros out of the race. Don't let him double. No, but I really want that Garistros. Yeah. Yeah, the longer it moves. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Garage because he's really concentrated. Oh, oh, no, not gonna do that one. Nope, not today. He's like, I'm getting out of here. Not today. That's not happening. Garage jumps up, so. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna tie to chaos that. Okay. Because that's a nice job for you. Oh, I got it right here. Better. Yeah, that's a pass. Okay. That's uh, a 16 on die. And then against Hunter, it was a 24. Oh, yeah, that is. <laughs> so that is uh, 7 points of bludgeoning. Oh, bludgeoning! Oh, my god, this. 
Ouch. Uh, and he sees the highest it's ever been. He rolled a fucking natural one. Yeah. Uh, you careen ever downward with no obstacles in your path. All right, I'm going to... Wait, do we need to do the... We need to handle the boat? No, because you're off oh, of the rocky path now. All right, then I'm just going to uh, attack the Carisha. You have advantage. Oh, that's right. Let's see what's reckless. Uh, so a 27 hits. And a nat. Oh, 20. Hits. There we go. And you said I did need to suppress the. Yes. It's resistant to cold, but not to radiant. And they're deep. When he doesn't need to be. Separate the cold, you said? Yes. Like, you okay. need the higher one for you guys. He hit both of us. I did hit both of us. I know, yeah. but like, come on. <laughs> you passed your constitution. Well, you it's not special. Special. <laughs> I'm bitter because it's uh, every single fucking time. 32 cold. Okay. But you're not unconscious. Yeah, that not is, not that's not way higher than that. That's very good. I'm fine. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a straight 30. Radiant. <laughs> uh, monkey is still up <laughs> and snarling at you. Hunter, Harmony, you want to do anything? Um, all right, I will break out my weapon, but I think, I guess, I guess we just slay him. You get advantage on this. Yeah, Back I'll just attack him. That's fine. That's a twenty-two to hit. Yes. That's a twenty-four, and that is a twenty-two. So. <laughs> I'll use the electricity. Okay. So that's 19 plus 21, that's 40. Uh, and this monkey is just like split in half as you just Wah! cleave to the side, and its uh, big muscular arms just are holding onto the back of the ship for a second before it yeah. falls back off of it. Get out of here. Um, I'm going to use my last tidal wave to give us some extra speed and get us a little bit ahead of the rest of these monsters. Uh, wild magic is going to happen. Yes, it is. What does your internal monologue say as you do this? <laughs> like, finally, Hunter, you're doing something right. And also, what do you say? Now let's get the fuck out of here. What do you say to your teammates as you cast Oh, this yeah. Out? Well, did you roll the d6? No. I need to roll the d6. What do you mean, Harmony? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to prepare me for this since I'm steering. <laughs> Let me know what's coming. See the cowabunga! <laughs> and out loud I say, okay, Harmony. You are allowed to do this. It's fine. And I cast my wave. You gave yourself permission I to cast I gave myself permission to cast this spell. Uh, sure, that accelerates you uh, another, like, what's the range of the spell? It goes, like, how many feet? Uh, 60? Let me just grab the card. Uh, 60 feet. Yeah, it's 30 feet long. Okay, so a wave of water appears out of nowhere, uh, erupting from the slime, and pushes the boat an extra 30 feet forward. Shore is in sight. It's gonna bludgeon anything. Jeez, Harmony, give us there. a little warning! I'm sure Constance never had to deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, and my wild magic goes up and <laughs> Yeah, what happens with wild magic? Oh That's God. what I was about to ask. Wow! It has to go up and up and bam, 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 bam. I've been using my the chaos for the wrong, like shit. Okay, let's do this one. <laughs> this is what I like. I don't, I mean, I don't think I've ever had three things off at once except for that time that it was like. Oh, day. yeah, when you had like yeah. a magic yeah. surge or whatever. Hey, at least I get to that pick. That was pretty funny. Pick the result, you know. Yeah. Short, 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 short. Lesser <laughs> Not grow. Nope. Shrink, okay, shrink, no, shrink. If, if shrink is an option, you have to take no, it. No, 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 34. Was that Charlie? <laughs> Charlie's coming back in action. It's fucking Charlie! <laughs> oh my god. Um, fucking Charlie! Uh, slightly ahead of you, ahead of the drowning kiss, you hear, there's like a flash of white light and a whinnying noise. <laughs> and uh, you look at it. just comes like, whoa. And, <laughs> 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 Okay. 
Um, as the tidal wave settles, the flash of light occurs at the front of the boat. Um, and you can see ahead of you, uh, keeping pace slightly um, faster than the boat is actually moving, uh, is a resplendently radiant uh, white horse with um, almost golden mane and tail, uh, and also uh, hair around its hooves, and it sports just a glistening, sparkling single horn off of its forehead. Uh, and Harmony, you recognize Charlie, who turns his horse head and says, um, <laughs> With me! Together we'll flee this demonic island! <laughs> Charlie, uh, I miss you! And he casts the entangle spell backwards onto the drowning kiss and pulls you forward! Oh my god! Oh my god. Yes. At incredible speed, as like vines connect him to the drowning kiss. Oh my Increasing god. Your speed. Wow. Uh, everything about this. Hey, it's Charlie! Charlie's here! Who? What? Charlie. And with that, the drowning kiss rockets the last uh, several You say that out loud, or is this just like Harmony's a parallel log? It's Charlie! Yeah, that's pretty much her I think when she sees the light, she's like, oh no, what now? And then, Charlie! It's Charlie! Uh, the drowning kiss rockets the last several hundred feet uh, between the mountain and the shore. The ground evens out, the drowning kiss slides across the beach and slowly into the water and then begins to make its way, uh, continuing the momentum forward <laughs> out into sea. Uh, Charlie, having ran to the side uh, just before the drowning kiss overtook it and uh, forged its way into the water. And you look back onto the beach and you can see Charlie uh, rearing up on his, uh, his back legs and whinnying uh, a, a salute of sorts I like and just wave. waving his paws in the air. Um, and, uh, let me see if he can do anything for you as he leaves. It's been so long since I've had any wild magic, so this is really great. Uh, no, that's, that's the last you see of Charlie's, uh, actions before he, he vanishes in a flash of light. But, uh, as the drowning kiss begins to slowly, after the, uh, intense ride that this has been down the mountain, uh, make its way out into open sea from the bay of Kamekame Island. You glance back on the island's shore and you see, sure enough, by uh, the location where you know uh, the Grung creature's cave to be, um, the silhouette of an orange-skinned frog creature just sort of sitting in front of the cave, uh, chewing on a fish or something like that. And that is the last sight you see of Kamekame Island before it fades into the distance. And we'll pick up there next week. <laughs> wow. Well, this was one of the strangest days of my I life. I know! <laughs> this is how ships worked before with you, Kameko, right? <laughs> uh, Kameko was bewildered throughout all of that. Uh, great. <laughs> so thank you to anyone who tuned in to watch. Oh that was a fun episode. I had fun. I think everyone here had fun. Yeah, Hope you had great. fun watching. Uh, we'll be back next week, 7 p.m. Pacific time on Monday, for more Antiheroes Anonymous. Uh, we hope you come back and keep watching because we have fun like this all the time. <laughs> uh, other than that, hope you have a good night and thank you for watching. Bye. 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 Bye.